Grand Rise, Grand Rise, this is your girl. Tree Bad, how you feeling? How you doing? Um it was raining really hard last night in New York City. I got caught in the rain riding home. I was very exhausted. And not exhausted from the YouTube events of the week or me going back to work or those things, yeah, yeah, but energetically, I was drained, yo. I woke up this morning and it was a really somber but beautiful day. There's no more rain this morning. The sun is a little bit out, but the, the winds are blowing. And I'm pretty high up. So the winds that I see and feel are way different than the winds that are on the ground. And I went out on my terrace to water my babies. And I looked to the north. And I remembered what day this was. Oh, what day this is, what day this represents. Today is September 11th, 2020. Because I was going to say something else. 2020, 2020. Today is September 11th. 19 years ago. Damn, 19 years ago. On this day. New York City lost a couple of buildings. You know, it's funny how they say marijuana cuts off your short-term memory but makes your long-term memory awesome. It's true in most cases, except when it comes to 9-11. You see, I'm never gonna forget what I experienced on September 11, 2001. Never. And I'm going to share some of that with you, especially um, those of you who know me on YouTube. You know what I mean? See me in a chat. Talk to me. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'd rather tell my story than watch TV and look at the names of those who've passed, all almost 3,000 of them and 1,000 names I can actually remember for 19 years hearing them, about four or five I know. So let me go back into time on September 11th 2001 I worked at MTV it was a great time I was making six figures yeah yeah I was living the life I had already owned this place. But I changed my schedule. I used to work um, mornings and like the day or two days before I just switched it to, to working in the evenings more so. And September 11th was the first day that I did not have to go into work early. And I woke up, and back then, you know, my TV was in my bedroom, and my TV used to turn on automatically at a certain time. And I woke up a little bit before the TV came on. And I remember I woke up and was like, I don't even want to be up. What the hell? 
something going on, something going on. And then about five, ten seconds later, the TV pops on and you see a plane hitting one of the Twin Towers. And at first I thought, this is a movie. What movie is this coming up here? Because there's a lot, a lot of movies that um, show you the Twin Towers before they were destroyed, you know. What the hell movie is this? Two seconds later, Jim Ryan comes on the screen. If you're from New York, you know exactly who Jim Ryan is. Don't front like you don't know. You're not no real New Yorker if you don't know who Jim Ryan is, okay? Just like uh, Warner Wolf or Ernie Anastas and Mr. G. You don't know who uh, Jim Ryan is or go back to where you came from, okay? Anywho, Jim Ryan came up on the screen and said... This is not fake. The, the, the first tower just got hit by a plane. The fuck you mean that shit got hit by a motherfucking plane? You fucking crazy? So I'm watching, yo. I'm watching on TV. This first building. You know what I'm saying? Getting this fire... And it's moving um, because um, the way the ten Twin Towers were built, um, they actually move at the top. Okay, they sway from side to side a little bit with the wind. And somehow it allows them to stay upright that way, you know, it's all good. I know you never heard of a building moving, but yes, the Twin Towers did move a little bit. Um, and... Um, I started seeing these little objects float off to the side. Some of them were in the shape of fireballs. Then you realize those little specks that are coming out of the windows of this first tower were actually humans. They were humans jumping. Fifty stories up, sixty stories up, seventy, eighty stories up. They jumping. What else can they do? They're gonna die by fire, they're gonna die by the building falling. Which one? Which one? And the second tower was still intact. No problems, really. It's just the first building on fucking fire. Why don't you get all these people out? Why are they jumping? People were worried, yo. People were worried. I was worried. I worked in the heart of Times Square. I didn't see the movies. If somebody's fucking with the Twin Towers, Times Square is next. They talking about it on the news. They talking about it. I'm looking at these people jumping out the building. I'm like, what the holy high hell? And next thing you know, the next fucking plane comes and hits the shit. I think I was on the phone with my homegirl at the time. I was. I was on the phone with my homegirl, my sis, who worked at my job and was there. And, you know, in the heart of Times Square... When you up on the 50th floor, you can see a gang of shit, okay? So she saw a plane speed past. What the fuck kind of plane? So low. Why is this plane so low? What the fuck going on? And I'm looking at the TV, and the second plane hits. Bah! These two buildings, boop, tipped together. They touched each other, and that was it. That was a wrap. Okay? Both buildings were going to fall and fucking die. And do you know that people still stayed in those buildings? Do you know how many people stayed in the motherfucking buildings while they were crumbling and going through all this shit? 
They they were they were like, yo, stay in the building so that the fire department can come up. How many New Yorkers really listened to that? A gang of them. They listened. I have a homeboy. His mother worked with me, right, at my job at the time. He worked at the Twin Towers. You know, you get the stories in the day after. Or the or later in the day of or whatever. You see the pictures and shit. He was working up on a 30-something floor. And they was like, oh, no, you got to stay in here. I think he was in the second building. And this was after the second plane hit the damn building. Now, both of them are, are on fire. And they were like, no, stay, because you got to let the fire department come up. Because, you know, everybody was using the stairs. We want nobody getting on the, no damn elevator. And I guess the stairs weren't big enough for everybody. I never liked the, the, the Twin Towers, and I'll tell you why later. Um, he said, F that, I'm leaving. His boss literally looked at him and said, if you leave, you are fired. And he said, fuck you, I quit. He pushed through firefighters. He pushed through people. He pushed through all of that. And by the time he got out the goddamn building, turned around like Lot's wife, and all he saw was soot, asbestos, and a fucking two buildings done off. I used to go to the bank a lot in Times Square for work, and there was a, a, a young teller there, a uh, black guy, and he was from the West Indies, and he was so nice and so, um, he just had this thing about him where everybody was cool with him. You know, everybody knew his name. I'm just a customer I knew homeboy's name, and I won't say it because I'm already at the verge of tears, and I don't feel like it. I don't feel like crying. He died in them towers, yo. Because he had just transferred from Times Square to fucking the, you know, World Trade Center. That was a promotion for him at his banking job. Gone. My homeboy that ran out of the building uh, just in time to turn around and see the whole fucking building collapse. He's very sick now. Very sick. Really bad lung cancer. All the things that were happening with first responders and regular folk, that shit was real. I had a homeboy. I actually had a co-worker, right? My co-worker lived on the block after me, okay? He, was, he liked to take the express bus into work. So when he took the express bus, you got to go through the tunnel and you got to pass by the Twin Towers, right? You really literally have to pass by the Twin Towers because you're on the West Side Highway and you got to, you know, go through the end, blah, blah, blah. What do you think it's like to sit on an express bus, okay? You cannot move because there are two big freaking buildings burning right above you. You can't move, not only because there's two freaking buildings burning above you, but because you're not sure if the ground under you is going to stay afloat. Yes, folks. The, the tip of Manhattan, a lot of it was man-made, okay? Battery Square Park, a lot of the world trade, that land is man-made. That's not natural land. So they were worried about if the Twin Towers fell a certain way that it will crack the freaking bedrock and sink that man-made part of New York City, of Manhattan. Oh yeah, that's why he couldn't move, right? He, didn't, he couldn't get off the bus. They didn't know what was going to happen. No clue. So he had to sit there in the express bus when he decided to walk out of the express bus, the last thing you want to see is falling fucking humans. Splat, 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 
Splat. No, they don't talk about that. Dead human over here. Dead human over here falling from the fucking sky. He don't live here no more. So what you think they're going to do? They're going to jump back on the bus. They don't want to jump outside and see that. What you want to do? Run away and have a human being fall on you? One that's almost burnt? What do you do? You know, you watch the movies all the time. And you say, hey, if that happened to me, I'll do X, Y, and Z. You don't know that. You don't know that. It's a real life horror movie went on 19 years ago over here. I called my friend. I was like, yo, get the fuck out of Times Square. You're going to die, bitch. You're going to die. Why fucking 30, 40 minutes after the fucking fact she sees the fucking stealth bombers from the government go in? That motherfucker should have been there from the beginning. These motherfuckers in the air, they got radar and shit. You supposed to know when a plane go too fucking low, right? Wouldn't that be the common sense shit? A plane going too low. What the fuck going on here? Y'all supposed to track all the bumblecloth plane. But somehow, some illegal alien, the terrorist motherfucker, could jump on a plane and do the fuck shit. And then the, the stealth bombers come five hours after fucking fact. I had more faith than the NYPD that day. And if only they had planes, they probably would have got there sooner. Fuck is you telling me? I called my friend. I said, yo, you're going to die. I walked out on my motherfucking balcony, looked up to the north, and I could still see the fire. Because back then when the Twin Towers was up, I could see one of them from my balcony. And no, I don't live in Manhattan. All I could see was fire. You think living in a in a in New York City, whether it be Brooklyn or Harlem or you know the worst part of Queens or the Bronx or you know the worst part of Staten Island or some shit is bad, try and try and deal with that shit, yo. How many friends you from New York? How many friends you got that died from 9-11? How many friends you got that are sick? From 9-11. To this day. Sick. They ain't die already. Yeah, we lost a lot of money. We sure did. We lost a lot of money. But you know what New York gained? We gained unity, yo. We gained a little bit of solidarity for a hot second. Rich and the poor, they ain't, it ain't matter. It didn't matter. White and black, that shit ain't really matter, yo. It didn't matter. In a city of about 9 million people, 3,000 people were important, yo. More than 3,000 people who survived that shit were important. The first responders, the NYPD, the fire department, the EMS, and the EMT, them motherfuckers were important. And now some people could say, yo, were they more important then? Or are they more important now for the COVID crap? But guess what? COVID didn't bring no New Yorkers together. Nah, it didn't. Fuck out of here. COVID showed up the bullshit. COVID showed up the mental health, uh, social economic, um, you know, racial issues that were always there even before 9-11 came. But somehow, 9-11 brought New Yorkers together, yo. Y'all know I, I couldn't ride into Manhattan for a whole month. 
I ain't want to do it. I ain't want to ride no car, no cab, none of that into man. I had to take the subway. I ain't get to see the Twin Towers. I ain't get to cross the Brooklyn Bridge and see fucking uh, empty fucking space. You know, people that don't live in New York, they'd be like, why that means something to you? Because I saw the burning bodies jumping off. I knew what they were. They weren't birds. And if I was in that situation, I might have done the same shit. I'm on the fucking 80th floor, and right below me, there's nothing but fucking fire. Coming out the damn building. I don't know if this part of the building is going to slide off or blow up. Or, might as well jump. I ain't going to live. They were a little heavier than paper planes. They didn't float for too long. You know, it's one thing to, um, it's one thing to see somebody pull a gun out on you or pull a gun out on somebody else. It's one thing to see somebody get their head blown off. I seen it. I seen it. It's one thing to see. Somebody whip out an AK-47 and start busting shots in a fucking club. I've seen it. I have. No, they ain't come out with no Glock and no 45. I've seen big guns pulled out in clubs and they bust the shots. I've seen it. But it was nothing compared to imagining the hopelessness of somebody having to jump off of a building knowing either way whether they stay or they go they're gonna die like they chose their death is it an honorable thing for a couple of seconds brought all of America together or most of America. I don't, I, you know, I didn't go further out into the far reaches of America to see what the fuck, but it sure did seem like America as a whole was united, right? But I also knew that that meant the end of the money. The end of the Clinton era where all the money was motherfucking good and everybody had money in their pocket. Everybody. I knew the days was done. Once I found out that, you know, Baby Bush and his good friends, the Bin Ladens, had a plane, first plane, only plane, after all this crap, to fly in the air. Nobody really gave two shits about some make-believe or, or crazy-ass hole in the Pentagon or near the Pentagon or whatever the hell they was talking about. Nobody gave a shit. All the fucking conspiracy theories came out. I didn't give a shit. I believed them. I don't believe this was some real terrorist. I think it was real government bullshit. There you go. Because like I said, I don't see with how fresh America was at the time with technology and you got your radar and you got your flight plans and you could track this and you got a black box here and a black box there that you couldn't figure out that a plane was going below the fucking radar into a spot where there should be no motherfucking plane. Right? You that slow on the uptake? Oh no, they hit the Pentagon, so that's why they couldn't do it. 
Oh, yeah. See this shit? I had a conversation with somebody in the chat yesterday about New York City and drones. It is illegal in New York to have a drone at a certain height in the air. It's illegal. You have to get a permit for that drone. I know because I've worked in the film industry. And a lot of people in the film industry look for people with drones and will pay you to use your drone to give them the footage that they need. But they have to secure the permit to allow your drone to function at that height. Otherwise, NYPD will take that motherfucker down. You cannot use your drone out here to spy on people. That's why you cannot have it at a certain height. Your drone has to be very innocent in what the fuck it films or records. You can't use it to spy on people. You can't use your drone to fucking look at certain public buildings. Because if the wrong people see you do it, they're going to think you're a fucking terrorist. And they're going to get your ass. This is not directed to any person, you know, specifically... Or even generally. This is just what the fuck happens in New York. Why you think they don't deal with the drone shit? You could get a drone, but you will find out that your drone usage in New York City is so fucking limited. It really is. And I'm talking about New York City. I'm not talking about upstate. Okay? And most specifically, Manhattan. Alright? Because Brooklyn can get away with this shit. A little something. Because I've seen motherfuckers in Brooklyn call the fucking police on a drone that was too high. Call the police on a drone that they thought was spying on fucking people. And guess what the fuck happened to that drone? Bye bye. Nah, you ain't go to jail. But do you really want to pay a fine? Nobody likes to pay fines out here. Nobody likes to spend the money like that. Nine Eleven was considered the single most deadliest terrorist act on U.S. soil, right? Believe what you want. We're not here to discuss that because, you know, just as I can discuss conspiracy theories on Nine Eleven, I can discuss conspiracy theories on COVID, on the freaking Spanish flu of 1914, whatever you want. I can we talk about conspiracy theories on Jesus. I'm not here to talk about that. I just want to remember that brief moment of unity. When everybody was like, New York, we got your back. That attack on New York was attacking on America. We not for it. I remember that shit. Because in this day and age of the COVID, that ain't happened at all. It was the total opposite. New Yorkers are the pariah. They're the fucking epicenter. Get away from them. If only Governor Cuomo came up with New York Strong and New York Tough 19 years ago, that shit would have been on point. Maybe he did, and I just don't remember that part. I don't even think he was governor then. It was Pataki or some shit. Yo, when 9-11 hit, heads even wanted Rudy Giuliani to come back, yo. Because they thought he was going to regulate that shit properly. <laughs> you, see how, you see how people get crazy when, when things happen? Salute to every single New Yorker that was affected by 9-11. Salute to everyone that passed. Salute to everybody that survived and then passed. Salute to all the first responders. And we could talk about the money if you want to, but
talk about the impl implications and ramifications and how it was the beginning of this cashless society. But I'd rather reflect on life. I'd rather And there's a bee. <laughs> I don't recall bees in 2001. I don't even think I cared back then. I'm so glad I care now. Let's try to find some unity today, folks. Let's try. Let's try our best to find some sort of unity today. That's my point. That's it and all. Even if the unity is only within yourself, try to find some sort of unity. Try to find some kind of common bond with your neighbor, your fellow man, your, your enemy, whoever. We're all human. There's a common bond. Celebrate that, yo. I'm not going to say celebrate America, you know. I could, but mm, celebrate humanity. Uh, whether in America, Canada, Mexico, Germany, Africa, wherever. On motherfucking Mars. Because we do have glimpses where we come together. There are glimpses of hope where we come together. And, and you know. And if I could see it 19 years ago, I, it should be okay for me to see it 19 years later, right? At least for five seconds. I'm going to work on that today. I'm going to work on that today. I hope you do too. Peace and blessings.